welcome to TJD Movie Reviews, episode 32. We watched Dead Alive. I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Dead Alive also has another name, doesn't it? Brain Dead. Okay. Overseas. Okay, I wasn't sure if Dead Alive was the American or if it was the overseas. Which one was which? Dead Alive over here, Brain Dead over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where would over there be? Uh, Anywhere but here. Well, I'm just saying, where where does this take place? Uh, New Zealand. And what famous director from New Zealand does this? An Academy Award winning one. Peter Jackson. Overrated. <laughs> what have you seen from Peter Jackson? All the Lord of the Rings. I couldn't, see... wa- I couldn't watch King Kong. No? Uh-uh. You hated it? Jack Black kind of ruined it for me. This guy, fucking Jack Black. Dude, Dude, King Kong was sweet. I don't know who you're talking about. At the time, it was mind blowing. Special effects wise, did you notice the beginning of this movie? They got yep. the rap thing mm-hmm. from Skull Island. I noticed that too. Is yeah. that the King? That's the King Kong Island. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was like, "Oh, they got King Kong because it's Skull Island." He's always been a huge King Kong fan, mm-hmm. so like getting to do it, I'm sure it was fucking incredible for him. Hmm. I wonder if those were the same tribes people that you see from King Kong. Same tribe. <laughs> Perhaps. Oh. I, I bet you that was kind of an homage. He obviously, because of his mm-hmm. love for it. That's, that's a cool little Easter egg. Mm-hmm. So, it is kind of like an Indiana Jones-esque beginning, though. I don't think it's a great beginning. Well, let, let me... No, it's... Let me, let me summarize okay. briefly... Dead Alive is about a guy named Lionel and his mom. And his mom is kind of overbearing, uh, breathing down his shirt all the time about everything. Uh, breathing down his shirt. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, breathing down his neck, whatever. And uh, everything he does, she seems to be like kind of watching him like a hawk. And she's always bossing around and telling him what to do. And having him mow the yard when it's already mowed and clean, and she's just, she's too attached. Um, But he ends up meeting a girl that works at a local grocery shop named Paquita, and her grandmother is kind of a, uh, what what would you call it, a fortune teller? Like like a a gypsy type? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Who reads Paquita's fortune and basically says, there's going to be a guy in your future. Uh, there's going to be, she doesn't say this, but there's going to be oppression and death and a bunch of shit, and then you'll be happy forever. And that's the gist of it. And then she says, you'll know it's him because there will be this symbol of the star and the moon. And then right after the fucking little uh, fortune telling, our uh, main character Lionel just wanders in and meets with the, uh, the main chick and... Knocks over all this shit, and it makes the symbol, and you're like, alright, we got a movie here. It's literally seconds after she says that. Yep. Um, so they, you know, go off to the zoo together. Um, Lionel's mom is a psycho and kind of follows him there to keep an eye on him, and gets bit by this fucking rat thing that we do, I didn't talk about it, but in the opening of the movie, there's all this shit that you're wondering what the fuck it has to do with like, once all the shit with the Lionel starts happening, you're like, what What the fuck was the beginning of this movie? But, uh, yeah, they they get this rat monkey. creature. Rat yeah, monkey. a rat monkey in this crate from all these tribe people. And this guy gets bit, and they end up hacking him up. And you're like, what the fuck? But, yeah, so the mom gets bit. She starts changing. Everything gets out of control. Other people are getting infected. And Lionel tries to hold it together, basically, and stay alive. Good enough, Gist? Miss anything? I, I, yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Um, I was going to say, a little Easter egg, too. Uh, when the grandmother's reading the cards, and the card flips for him, it's, uh, he's the Black Knight. Well, the candy he reaches for... Black licorice. Black Knight licorice. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, IMDb. (laughs) It's good for something. Uh, Not just crazy reviews and...
fighting on message boards. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Pros, cons. I have to say a pro is the acting. <laughs> really? No, I'm kidding. The I'll, I'll say a con right now. The acting in this movie is not great. Nope. Uh, I do think your two leads are at least good enough. They're, they're, they're competent they're, to hold. They're serviceable. But everybody else is pretty nah. Um, at best, it's not downright terrible. At worst, it's it's pretty bad. Um, I know this. I've accepted it. I've come to terms with it. I was going to say, the, uh, the lead, he kind of looks like, oh, who was the one guy who was in Doctor Who? He then was in Jessica Jones. Tenenbaum? Is that his name? Oh, no. uh, I David know who you're talking about. David Tennant? Yep. David Tenenbaum. Yeah. Christmas tree? <laughs> David Tennant. <laughs> David Tennant, though. David Christmas Tree. I think I think he kind of looks like him. Not I'm not gonna say it's a exact, but yeah, they, they, I I could see it mm-hmm. with a similar facial structure and like hairstyle. Yep. Um, I have no idea what that guy's done outside of uh, this movie. I looked it up. Literally nothing. Okay. Like he's had a bit part here and there in movies or TV shows you've never heard of. New Zealand shit. Yeah. And I'm assuming the girl that played Paquita never... I didn't look her up. Because <laughs> I don't think she even had a picture on IMDb. Yeah, that's usually not a good sign. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will give a pro. A real pro. I think the practical effects, for the most part, are actually pretty fucking cool. For 1992, absolutely. And, I mean, and the limited budget that they had. Right. I would say that wasn't... It didn't hold back, you know, the film. There are parts... When when the rat monkey gets killed, it doesn't look the greatest. No. no. When when most of the people get killed, it doesn't look the greatest. I don't know. When you got... You know one that actually surprised me with how graphic it was is the nurse that gets her head ripped back. Yeah. There's like a fountain of blood. I was actually like, ooh, shit. Like the first time I saw it... Because it comes out, like, there's relatively little, like, it's more gross out, like, body horror than anything Mm -hmm. for most of the movie. Like, it isn't a scary movie. No. Um, but that was one that actually, like, I was like, damn, there's, there's some graphicness to this. It was very graphic at times. I should, most of the movie was pretty damn graphic. Uh, supposedly, it's one of the bloodiest films, but by usage of gallons of movie blood. So, but I wanted real blood. Oh, I'm sorry. Pig's blood. <laughs> We're all gonna laugh at you. Okay, Carrie. <laughs> Don't you just have buckets of blood in your basement? Yeah. It's for personal hygiene, though. Uh, I was gonna say, mm. can we can we use it to make a movie? Use it to freshen up. Keeps me young. Yeah? Yeah. Like, uh... Drink a little... What's her name? The... The the madam from from Stay Alive. Alive. (laughs) That movie. (laughs) These are very comparable. (laughs) What? (laughs) Alright, pros, cons? I was going to say, which effects were better? Stay Alive? Or... This movie. Well... I don't know, are we talking computer or what? Well, like, you look at that rat monkey. That thing looked like crap. It was 92. I know, but I'm... It, Spawn had better graphics. I have a soft spot for claymation. I do, too. Like, I, I adore Robot Chicken because of what they're able to do with that. And how Robot fun. Chicken is new, though. Yeah. Like, that's... That's high-tech claymation. This, this was... This is, like, more than ten years before that. Yeah. Oh. For the time. I'll yep. admit, it, it doesn't look great. No. It's dated. But, Especially on a big TV. <laughs> but I love it. Uh, I agree with Jake. Like, I was... You have to put yourself in the mind of your... That's the year yeah. that you're in. And for the, for that time, it was decent. But two years later, you had Jurassic Park. 
That's Big, Steven Spielberg. That's <laughs> even ridiculous. Money means nothing Money. to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and you want to talk about a movie that... As in he's established. I saw the, the eyebrow raise you gave me. You want to talk about an old movie that God. put out some of the best special effects I've probably ever seen in a film. Exorcist. Yeah. Those are the best practical, yes. Yeah, nothing really holds a candle to that movie. Should have done that. That's a good one. I've yeah, actually never seen, seen The Exorcist. What? I, no, no, no. I, I've seen the clips. Had I known that, we would have watched uh, The Exorcist. Uh, and, uh, like, Scary Tyrell. Movie 2, that whole... Like, that doesn't it, count. <laughs> when James Woods is trying to exercise that shit out of his body, and then... Mob, will you get out of there? <laughs> God, You're no movie. fun! <laughs> That movie's a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> then, um, I'm, like, embarrassed while I'm watching it. Like, he, walk, he walks into the bedroom, she spins her head, fuck this shit, he tries leaving. <laughs> scary movie? Yeah, Scary, scary movie, movie too. Uh, <laughs> Your mom sucks big cocks in hell. And he just pulls out a gun. <laughs> and <she's>, suck this. <laughs> oh, I love James Woods. <laughs> I must bless this house. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I will give a pro. Um, oh my God. I never said anything negative during the film. I don't you, know why you're getting you, on me. You would throw out little, why did this happen? Why didn't this happen? I didn't see this. He, he, that's true. Too. But Can't, usually when you do it, it's an indicator. From my history, when we watched Ricky O, <laughs> it's an indicator so, that you're not having a good time. From the second pod we did <laughs> yeah you have you have one thing that i don't know from that pod that's what i took away is okay that's kind of how ty is gonna act when he isn't digging it <laughs> um i bet he didn't dig it he's just saying this right now uh the pro would be um the the relationship even though she came off really creepy and clingy I think it was some. It, it, it set up nicely because you had Lionel, who was a uh, uh, mama's boy kind of thing, right? But then she helped him break out of that, and I think also it led to the ending where he's able to stand up to his mother. So it actually helped with the character development, even though yeah, she was clingy as hell. But I, haven't we all been there? Your mother turned into a demon that you had to kill to save the woman you love? Yeah. Hmm. It's a real Binding of Isaac story. <laughs> I got a pro. Lionel's mom's progressive hotness throughout the film. Whoa. She only gets hotter as the movie goes on. I agree. That is, that is a true. That is a true statement. And then full frontal nudity at the end. I mean, you can't ask for more. Mm-hmm. Full nudity? What do you mean just full frontal? It's full nudity. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, you saw everything. Yeah. The listener right now. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to know what I'm talking about, watch the movie, and then you will understand what what I'm into. Should we explain how hard it is to find this movie? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I had to suck a lot of dick to find this. (laughs) No. uh, (laughs) (laughs) to, To get this new... The other day on Amazon, it was like $172, and I said, nah, (laughs) I enjoy you movie, but you're not worth that, Uh, but it's out of print is the problem. They had a a Blu-ray out in the UK, I believe, which is region locked, so if I were to get that, we wouldn't be able to do shit with it unless we had a region free Blu-ray player, which is worth more trouble than it's even worth to own a Blu-ray player to watch one fucking movie. Um... The other option is to buy a used copy because it's it just isn't made anymore. And we never got a Blu-ray release here. Peter Jackson apparently was asked at a con where the fuck the movie is. And he's like, I don't know. Like, whoever, whatever studios are arguing about the rights to the movie, putting it on Blu-ray, it's just, it's a tangled fucking mess. Mm-hmm. And it came out in 92, so... People have been waiting a while, but I was able to get a used copy for 25 bucks, and I felt that it was worth it, because now I could say that I own it. 
because this isn't a movie like it isn't on streaming. Um, like I don't know where I I don't foresee any like movie theater ever having like you know how every so often you have a Rocky Horror Picture Night and I don't see this being one of those. They did Dead Alive at Alamo. Oh really? But they did a I think they're called a. Well, I don't remember what they're called. It's like a mystery science theater type of thing mm. where you would be there and they would be talking shit during it, which... So, like, what me and Drew were doing? Basically, <laughs> but it'd be a bunch of fuckers that you don't know and it would just be aggravating. Mm-hmm. So... See, I don't think I would like that live. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't like it either. And I would never want to do it because I would be pissed off. Like, even if people were like, hey, TJD, you guys should do, like, you know... Do a live show. like oh, Stay alive. <laughs> uh, I don't... Yeah, I don't think commentary during a movie is appropriate, really. Like, I like... I like the... Let's go out and talk about it. You know, just mm-hmm. talk about it. So everybody yeah. that's seen it, you know... And it can be entertaining and you don't have to interrupt it for people. Because, I don't know, if people like their movies. It's, you just want to see it. And sometimes... Those jokes can fall flat. Yeah. Like, there, it would be nothing worse than to be sitting there watching a movie, trying to get into it, and the guy makes a joke, and just a terrible joke. Well, especially if you're, let's say you're a guy that's like, I love this movie, they're finally playing it, you don't do your research, and you get in there, you're not going to be in a good mood. No. Like, so even if the jokes are okay, you're immediately rubbed wrong. Like, I don't know, it's just not a thing that I would be interested in ever seeing live. Well, yeah, I, I think that that kind of medium would be kind of fucked up. Uh, but for the MST3K guys that actually do it, they do like films that nobody yeah, has right. ever seen, and that's yeah. why it's okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you're not actively like interested. Yeah, the those, those aren't even B movies; those are like D movies. Yeah, you, well, you go into it knowing that what you're gonna see is dog shit, and they're just gonna tank on it the whole time. Which to say, like, I'm not saying this movie was at all a D movie or a piece of shit or anything like that, but you go into it, like you said, knowing that it's not to be taken seriously. Right. But yeah, they did play it. Other than that, though, I haven't heard of this movie being played around town. Maybe other places, but not mm-hmm. here. I think I'd seen the poster somewhere, but I, I, there's no way it was played at any of the theaters before Alamo got here in Omaha. I would think a print of this would be pretty hard to get your hands on, too. I would agree with that. Probably not many out there. Nope. Pros, cons? Um, I'm going to go with a small con, and you're going to give me crap right away, but let me explain. Okay. Because you're going to point to one is, instance. Is it, it going to be about biting? No. Okay. But, That'll um, be later? Maybe. Um continuity and i know i made that joke about the bloody footprints that's not what i'm getting at okay what i'm getting at is when these people start turning like one of them their their whole body is like able to get a mind of its own and keep attacking other people Mm -hmm. and then he has that amazing scene in the foyer of the house where he destroys all the people but yet they're done they're just done it's like that makes absolutely no sense. Why Why aren't those still attacking? He chopped up with a lawnmower. Yeah, but that guy's intestines were still going around. But if you look at the, the entryway to the house, there's not like a lot of body parts. One, you could argue this, is the guy, the uncle, that fucking hacked everybody mm-hmm. up and there was a big pile of shit, but it was moving around still. I don't know, like it... I think he wanted to make a zombie movie that was a notch above like destroying the brain mm-hmm. but i think after he had already written it or started filming or whatever he went this is going to be kind of fucking difficult because we can't really take that much like there'd be so much detail like it'd be a long movie about fucking hunting every giblet of these fucking zombies mm-hmm. down and destroying it like I think he tried to do it with, like, the big, like, memorable characters, but, uh, I don't know. I'd agree that not all the rules apply to each zombie, 
And see, that's what I was getting at. Not not trying to make like that joke I did when we were watching about the bloody footprints, but just like you saw arms and hands, and like you had seen like a hand get cut off, and it keeps moving, like mm-hmm. you know. I'd agree. I think it was more just we're trying to have campy fun, so just throw logic out the window. That's what I took out of it. Like they they obviously took some liberties when when doing it. Because yeah, obviously it was one character you've seen. They, they they've been a zombie for a while. Is that? That gang member, the 1950s gang yeah. member, the who's yeah, who had his intestines start having a mind of their own. Like his sphincter decided that it now can. I, I like when it looks at itself in the mirror, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, kind of cocks its head. Like, yeah, <laughs> even you see it fart twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, he farts twice. So or he burps. Or, ten yeah. out of ten. <laughs> but yeah, that that that's the continuity I was getting into. So no, I'll I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, one thing I thought was weird, I I won't even call it a con or anything. I just wanted to point this out. Like when those people got the rat monkey, the people from the zoo, did they not like? You would think they would check to see, like, what they were getting or or the fact that it had eaten other shit before. I don't know. I just... It was, you don't have a movie otherwise, you, but... You, you have to suspend your disbelief. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a big part of the movie is that you have to spend, suspend your disbelief for a lot of it. It's like wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Like WWE, not like high school wrestling. That, that shit's real, but... I got a pro. Uh, the gore. Yeah. But the gore was pretty yeah. pretty good. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of dismemberment. Like, lots of fucking dismemberment. Like, the guy you were talking about, mm-hmm. he, like, kicks down on him after he's trying to get through a door, and it, like, kind of cuts the guy in half, and then he kind of wiggles free, and it shows you, like, the body ripping apart, like, the torso from the legs. And, and you know, I'm sure, like, Romero did this, like, either Night of the Living Dead or Day of the Living Dead. I'm sure in one of his movies, Romero did something like that. But it kind of, like, as I was watching it, I was like, this is kind of Walking Dead-esque. That, unless you destroy the brain, which that isn't the rule in this film, but, like, unless you destroy the brain, that thing will keep going. So, like, like the body's at point will rot so far that they start falling apart, but that they, they'll keep going. Mm-hmm. So in regards to that, one of the things I, I loved was that it wasn't, the, it wasn't the same, wasn't the same, uh, violence over and over again. Like they found ways to keep it fresh in terms of, of like limbs getting hacked off or pe- the way people were getting butchered and, and just all this stuff. Not that I'm like some sort of masochist that likes the, <laughs> See people get. I I, I just thought only it was, only in the bedroom for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. how you like it down in your well? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but no, like you see, you see all people get cut in half. Uh, you see people. One lady gets uh, her head ripped uh, backwards. Ripped backwards. You see another lady get thrown into like a wall light fixture, and her face lights up. That was pretty um, cool. Yeah. I will say, I like that. And then her face started on fire after like twenty minutes of her being there. Um, people got hacked up with lawn mowers. That uncle in the basement when he gets his head and you see a spinal cord like separating yeah. from his body, you're like, all right. I was gonna say that uncle actually did get the same punishment over and over again. And oh, he, the kick in the nuts. Yeah, I kind of got old. That kind of got old. <laughs> like the first, like she does it. Then doesn't she do it again? Then the baby does it. With a severed leg? Yeah. Then... Pro baby. <laughs> no. I hated that baby. <laughs> I hated that baby. <laughs> that fucking baby's amazing. You shut your whore mouth. I... I you didn't like the little laugh? You didn't like how it would cut from, like, a puppet like, to, like, a, a midget? A midget? <laughs> that was funny! But... <laughs> that was funny... But no, I didn't care for the whole no baby thing. I was waiting for it to actually see it die. I really did want to see that stupid thing die. <laughs> well, I think it burned to death in the house. I, I'll give a pro. Uh, like, the amazingly campy scenes in this movie. Like, 
I'll give you examples. Like, first off, when they the nurse gives birth to that zombie baby and he gets it, he takes it out to the park. For no reason. For God knows what reason. And they he, he ends up beating the shit out of this baby in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was fucking amazing. And the homeless guy is like, yeah! Yeah, the homeless guy. <laughs> that was... But at the same time, it was like, why would he do this? It was. It was like, why? I think his whole thing is he tried to always carry on like everything was okay. So I think... I don't know. You're not far off saying he's got like a weird Norman Bates type of thing. In the sense that he's always trying to proceed as if everything's okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think I think some uh, some part of you wants to if, if if some traumatic event like that happens to you, you're just you in wanna, denial. Yeah, you're in denial. You want to retain some sort of normalcy. Like I would say, keep the damn baby in the basement. Well, I agree. <laughs> uh, but uh, other than that scene, uh, the fucking scene with the priest. The, oh yeah, that was that was that's awesome. a, that's the a major karate pro. priest was amazing. I told you he's the best character of the whole movie. I'm here to kick ass for Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm here to kick ass for the Lord, is what yeah. he says, yeah. I like what he... <laughs> he just starts beating the fuck out of those zombies, like no questions asked. Yeah. And when he's up on the thing before he even jumps down, he's something like, oh, the devil's afoot, or he says something <laughs> weird like that. Yeah. Like, I've been waiting for the dead to rise. He just jumps down and starts going to town, you're like, fuck Yeah. And, like, uh, I love the part where he's fighting with a zombie and he goes to, like, flip it and the fucking arm arm just rips off. off. And then he does it again and and the leg sweep just... Yeah, that was was amazing. amazing. Yeah. (laughs) And then he kicks his head off. Like, fuck yeah. That guy should have been in the whole movie. I mean, he was. He technically was. I mean, he should have been alive for the whole movie to kick ass with Lionel. I I want a movie... I want Peter Jackson to come back now and make that guy's movie. (laughs) Like an alternate, what if the priest would have been the main character? That's the fucking movie I want to see. And it's a mixture of this with, like, The Raid, where he's just (laughs) fucking shit up. I will be there opening night. Gareth Evans and Peter Jackson need to get on this movie. Yeah. Take Uh, my fucking money. I want Peter Jackson to help Guillermo get Hellboy 3 off the floor. Yeah! Now we're talking. I just came. (laughs) Well, like... Like when uh, Lionel's mom came while he was having sex with what's her name. That was that. That was a weird innuendo they made. What? Did, okay, when Lionel and what's her name, Paquita, Paquita, after the first oh, date, I, they're I sleeping together, and then all of a sudden the mom, like as it looks like he is, his mom like splooges blood from her wound, and I was like. That's kind of disgusting. But tie the symbol... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what's a symbol for, and that's why I said it was kind of disgusting. <laughs> There's a lot of disgusting shit in this movie. Yeah. I give it a pro, though. Like, the, there is some that's over the top. Which one was over the top? The dead bodies fornicating. That was actually kind of funny. Was it the pus in the soup? Yes. It that... had to be in the movie. Which, that, again, leads to, like, you have to be bit. Like, I was wondering, it's like, you have to be bit. Blood the, and all that. Some of the right. rules don't apply. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> some of the rules don't apply. And how the fuck Paquita and Lionel got through the whole movie without getting bit or scratched or any of that shit. She did get bit. But yeah. the teeth came out. Yeah. Because he had dentures. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Remember he swings? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she goes, she wipes it off. She yep. wipes the dentures off. So she got lucky because he had dentures and not real teeth. So, yeah, this isn't. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to be taken that seriously. You're not try. You're not supposed to try and analyze this. You just kind of kick back and go, "Wow, let's kill some zombies." <laughs> uh, which do they? I think one person calls them zombies. I think zombies yeah, I said one time. Yeah, I'm trying to remember references. I think they... they didn't really acknowledge it. The uncle called them stiffs a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Because he thought they were just dead, dead bodies. bodies. But uh, I thought some one person said zombies. But uh, maybe. Would you call the uncle a pro or a con? I'm always wondering. 
Uh, I call him a con. I kind of got tired of seeing his herpes riddled face. He got to the point. I mean, yeah, he's just such a disgusting character. Yeah. Like the way he looks and the way that he acts. That I don't know. They wanted to give Lionel like motivation, like something to overcome other than nine hundred thousand zombies. But but he doesn't really even overcome his uncle. Well, he punched him in the face. He yeah. Was, yeah. But, and then to, he killed him. To, well, no, he didn't. No, he didn't kill him. No, to get his ass knocked down back into the basement to figure out, oh shit, I didn't give them poison. I gave them a stimulant. <laughs> um, I, I think the character has a place. It definitely has a place in the movie. I, I just don't think the guy played it very well. I'll say he's, he's one of the weaker characters. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, because he, he does cut up all those zombies though and makes that nice big pile of body parts that are still moving so i like that scene mm-hmm. at least i like the angle when he starts yeah, he's like yeah, chopping it's, and it's the, all sped up the blood stuff. starts flying when he starts skiing yeah Jesus Christ. <laughs> um yeah i i don't know i i just think some of the like the biting none of that bothered me like the ripping off of faces that didn't get to me it, it, it usually is the pus i don't know why i find that more disgusting well maybe peter jackson knew that he's like i gotta get everybody of all types Mm. he had zombies fucking for fuck's sake in this movie and i thought that was funny that was pretty funny yeah when he's like oh lionel did you find your dad's old tapes or you know what are you doing in there (laughs) is that the one with the chambermaid and the donkey that did make me laugh i laughed at that line in 1957 yeah the chambermaid and the donkey there were films like this in the 50s, apparently. <laughs> in New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand. Oh. Uh, which then there was a whole background with the the father. So, do we want to go into that? If you want. I mean, I... Do you think it was a pro or a con? I think it was just kind of... It was filler. Kinda, yeah, I agree. It, it was more useful than that detective in The Big Lebowski, but... Um, this motherfucker. <laughs> it was, it was there to help him with the final confrontation with his mother. But other than that, it wasn't anything. I did like the pictures, though; those were funny. <laughs> of him inserting the, the the adultery photos of like him holding the giant sausage and putting it in her mouth. <laughs> it's like really. There's, there's no innuendo here. It's a, it's we all know what a, that it's is. It's a pretty childish movie. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, the the whole thing is, like, his mother is very protective, like Norman Bates. His mother is always there trying to protect him, but, like, to a crazy extent. extent. And you find out the whole thing is that he said he always feels bad because he's the only man or person left in his mother's life because his father saved him from drowning. Turns out the mother actually drowned the father because he was cheating on her. So, and the he as a little boy watched it. He saw it happen. She also drowned the uh, the slut. But <laughs> wow! I actually I think that's how she was in the credits. They credited her a slut. Actually, I think it was it was other woman or something like that. But. Mm. So you just filled in the blank. Yes. Slut. I got a pro. Well, hey, her mom called his girlfriend a slut, so. I'd call the house a pro. They fucking wrecked this house. Oh, yeah. It like, needed to be that big. In terms of fucking zombies tearing down walls and gore all over it and the ceiling getting destroyed, like, you feel like they trashed this fucking house. And that's, like, a really cool... Like, that's always something I appreciate with, like, a movie. When it feels like a lived-in, like, environment. Where they'll go to that extent rather than... I don't know. Like, something's... Not not that I have anything against... You know, this is just the first movie that comes to mind. But, like, the 2009 Star Trek. Stuff like that. That has really nice, pristine sets. Mm -hmm. And you're like, is this even a set? Like, is, is there a set? Is... It's CG, like, 
it feels more lived in that they trash the fucking place where it's being shot. You get what I'm saying? Was it an actual house or was it a set? I don't know if it was a set, but either way, they fucking trashed it. Oh, yeah. It, you, yeah. I, I'm not sure if it was an actual home or not, but I just appreciate the, like, destructiveness mm-hmm. of everything that went on in the house. Yeah, they were coming through walls. They were breaking windows, light fixtures, windows, furniture, starting fires, yeah. like, crazy shit. Loved it. I hope that guy had insurance. I don't think he cares. No. no I don't you wouldn't want to live in that house after all that shit went down? No. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Probably. You'd probably did, get it pretty cheap. Did you guys ever watch Breaking Bad? Yeah. yeah. So, spoiler to anybody who hasn't. Oh, but God. that it's like when Jesse's living in his house after that whole, like, destroying the body in his bathtub and yeah. he came through the ceiling. It's like, could you live there? He 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 had that issue the whole time after that. It's because it's like, I yeah. mean, I'm doing it. You you melted a body in your bathtub. He's got that well, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Oh, and it fell through the ceiling. I need something to mix in with protein shakes. Ooh, hydrochloric acid. <laughs> Ooh, Charles. <laughs> In charge. <laughs> was it bad when when they had that scene with the blender and Paquita turned on the blender and was going to put the baby in it that I secretly wanted the baby to go in the blender? No, everybody wanted that. I, and then it pops out. Then you wanted and you're it. you're like, no! I He's on the light fixture. Or the What was it, a fan or something? Yeah, no, it was, it was like, a light. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I movie. love the baby. I don't know why you hate I him. I hated it. And then when he gets that woman's skull and like separates it. That was yeah. pretty gnarly. You didn't like that? No, I that was probably his best part. Because he had to have crawled into like her neck or something. Mm-hmm. Can I give you guys a fun fact that is just amazing? What's mm-hmm. that? Uh Peter Jackson came in under budget on this movie by forty five thousand dollars. And he used the remaining money to go out and shoot the park scene with the baby and Lionel. Wow. And has gone on to say that that is his favorite scene in the movie. Oh, of course it is. It's usually those, like, throwaway shit that it usually ends up being the director's favorites. Nothing that really furthers the story. That but... explains why there was no reason for him to take the kid out. Peter Jackson was just like, wow, we got He's a like, lot of fucking yeah. money laying around. They shot it for two days. Pro. <laughs> it's stupid, but knowing that, it makes it better. Oh. And that's why I like it. That that baby, though. Were, did you guys ever see the TV show Dinosaurs? Yeah. yeah. The like baby. baby Sinclair? Yeah. They remind me of each other. Because that baby was evil on that show, too. Not was the it? mama. Not the mama. <laughs> I used to watch that show. I I remember that baby got possessed. I remember literally yeah. nothing about that show. All I know is yeah. the, other the, than I watched it like pretty regularly. I'm pretty sure. I, I remember like seeing it and everything, but I remember like nothing about it. I just know the ending was a real downer. Yeah. What, did they get hit by an asteroid? No. Uh, like... Global coldening or something like volcanoes go off, but then like they have a like what would be a nuclear winter or something, yeah. and they just they freeze to death. Oh, huh. that's how you end a TV show. <laughs> and it was all in the mind of an autistic child. No, this is not whatever the hell that was. Saint Elmo's Within Hospital. Saint Elmo's Hospital. Yeah, I don't know whatever. I it think was you coming. mixed Saint Elmo's, Elmo's Fire <laughs> and with whatever the name of that show is. Yeah. Because, uh, what's his name? Who Denzel? Well, Denzel was in it. George Clooney was in it, wasn't he? No. That's ER. No, I think George Clooney was also in it. Really, Clooney was in that show? Ah, uh, he may I, have. I think you're thinking of uh, No, ER. uh, what's his name? The guy who can't touch anything. He was on Deal or No Deal. What? Who's Howie, the guy from Deal? Howie Mandel? Yeah, Howie Mandel was on there. Bobby's World? Yeah. But before Bobby's I World. I seen Bobby's World. Yeah. I remember that. It was okay. Here, let me look. 
you know Bush did 9-11 I'm not cutting it either why do you keep (laughs) bringing it up I mean the listener needs to hear something oh it was a saint elsewhere oh well the saint wasn't far off I guess no but yes it was uh, it's all in the mind of an autistic child was, looking yes. at a snow globe, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Rosebud. What a terrible ending. <laughs> There's no bigger fuck you to all your fans. <laughs> oh, hey, that's who I'd think of. Mark Harmon was in it. That's not Howie Mandel. And Bruce Greenwood. I don't know who that is. Bruce Greenwood? I'll show you the picture. You'll recognize him. Probably not. Oh, the listener will know. Oh, Captain Pike from yeah, the new Star Trek. Yeah, no, Kurt, no, Commander. Not it's Kirk's Commander. Yeah, they actually had quite a few famous people in this. Damn. Huh. Okay. Anyway, dead, dead alive. Not saying elsewhere. By yeah. the way, there's nobody famous in this movie. <laughs> other yes. than Peter Jackson. I was going to yeah. say Peter Jackson. Jackson makes a cameo. Who doesn't even look like Peter Jackson? No, uh-huh. he's like unrecognizable. He doesn't have any facial hair. He has his glasses on, though. And he eats a sandwich that's been covered with embalming fluid. Yeah. Mmm. Yummy. <laughs> Preservatives. I wonder if you embalmed a Big Mac, would it last even longer? You probably don't even have to embalm it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the... Uh, people put that in their body. It'll be there with the roaches and the Twinkies. People and put sushi switches. in their body. I know, but sushi's good. Uh, do we want to do the scenes? Favorite, or our favorite slash unfavorite whatever scenes? Yeah, we could do that. Do we have anything else? Pros, I don't think so. Wow, no one's going to shit on it? Okay. I kind of did already. Well, a yeah. little bit. Not as much pushback as I expected. So the acting was bad. Who said the acting was bad? We, well, we all did. You said the con was not enough, baby? No, I did not say that. It's the con with all the movies you watch? <laughs> yep, Three Men and a Baby. I'm just like, there's not enough baby in this. I bet. Or uh, Dirty Dancing, I'm like, there's not enough baby. I want her in that corner. That's No one puts Why do you want her in that corner? corner? Have you not seen Dirty Dancing? No one puts baby in a corner. No one puts baby in a corner. It's domestic abuse. Wow. Anyways. <laughs> you want to go first, Jake, since it was your... You the kicker for the Giants? Wow. Who I picked up in both my leagues. <laughs> I mean, if he can kick his wife in the face, he can kick a football, right? My gosh. <laughs> Look at Jew's face. <laughs> I didn't hear about this. <laughs> yeah, That's why he was suspended for the Jim first Josh game. Josh Brown has been missing. Allegedly. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Of course. Anyways, Jake, talk about your I team. picked him up, too. You can check I that. know. I okay. saw. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> did he make that it's good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We just... Oh, that's terrible. D- okay, Disclaimer. We don't make a lot of disclaimers. Domestic abuse is not all right. It is wrong. If your husband or wife is beating you, call a hotline, please. All right. (laughs) I said it. I don't want to be viewed as a fucking monster more so than I already am. (laughs) My favorite scene is... um, I don't even pick a favorite scene. Well, you just think of one and you Uh, pick it. (laughs) I don't, but like, there's so many parts of the movie that I, I like. Um, I kind of like. Uh, I, you're gonna disagree, Ty, but I like the uh, the lunch scene where they're all eating together, and he's got his mm-hmm. mom. I mean, because it starts with her in a panic, going to get ready to meet with these people, mm-hmm. and she just peels a piece of her face off, and she's like, "Oh." She went. She tried putting makeup on, and it just. Yeah, and it peels. And Lionel sees it. And he's like, "Oh!" I, and he rushes over and he uses like put, gorilla glue or something. Yeah, he super glues her face back on. So they go down to this lunch, and it's like a weird, like surreal, like she's clearly decomposing and falling apart. 
and he's just carrying on like it's fine. And the lady notices, the, the lady that came, but the husband that she brought is totally oblivious, and they're eating, uh, what was it, custard? Well, no, they're having an actual meal at first, like yeah. beans, steak, right. potato, and, and yeah, then Mom he brings out the custard. Out. Yeah, he brings out the custard because the, the husband's like, no dessert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Mom's like... Under her bandages, you just see, like, this boil pop and, like, pus flies into this custard. And this oh. guy just takes a big bite of it. And he comments on it. He's like, oh, nice and creamy like I like. And you're like, god damn it. <laughs> and then her ear falls off. The into mom's her into her own custard. And she, and she eats, eats it. it. And then spits out the earring. The lady's like, I'm out. Yeah. She, she just takes off. And the husband's like, oh, that's one of the best meals I've had in, you know, forever. And... I don't know. It's just a fun scene. It's it's the most memorable to me. Mm-hmm. It's very unsettling. Yes. Do you want me to go or you go? I'll go. Okay. Uh, I said it before. The the park scene. Mm. It's amazing. Like it, it it probably sums up the movie like pretty well in terms of the campiness and what what you get and the fact that it was done after the movie was like pretty much wrapped and they had extra money to go out and do this scene it, it's like a cherry on top of the whole movie just him beating the shit out of the baby in front of everybody the drunk guy and it's like yeah it's awesome and and uh i don't know it was just it's just so absurd and crazy i love it i i was gonna do a bad scene a scene i hated but i decided i'll be somewhat positive you should oh. do both. Oh. Um, the one I actually enjoyed, it actually made me laugh. It was weird. It, it's right out, it's like it's supposed to be a week or two after the funeral. And he's dealing with, like, housing these four zombie bodies. And his uncle swings by and, like, uh, has to take a piss. But then, like, I don't know. He says he has a urinary tract infection, but it sounds like he has kidney stones when he I, tries I to pee in. I didn't notice he said that. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I got a UTI. You gotta let me use your loo or whatever. So. What was the noise he made? He's like, eh. Yeah. He, he's like, eh. And then it sounds like two pebbles hit in. So I'm like, I think he has kidney stones. But, I mean, like I said, his face is literally riddled with herpes. It wouldn't surprise me that he has some sort of STD as well. So, but, because he is very promiscuous, you, as you can tell by the party scene later. Anyways, um, yeah, the, uh, the uh, priest and the nurse, one, him trying to feed them was kind of funny. And then the priest and the nurse, while well, start getting it on while he's talking to his uncle. And that's where the whole, you know, oh, you got into your father's tapes, didn't you? And it just, it, it was funny. They created a baby awfully fast, but, I mean, it didn't take the whole nine months, but... <laughs> that zombie cum don't fuck around. No, it no. doesn't. Never thought I'd say that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Zombie cum. Oh, shoot. But, um... Yeah. I, uh... What's what the, you disliked? I was gonna say, the uh, funeral home scene. Like, yeah. Like, uh, w- which which part? The embalming? Yeah, I was going to say stuff. the embalming. Like, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, they made it look like it was a laboratory. I was like, wait, did he send his mom off to some science lab? And then all of a sudden, you figure out they're just embalming her. To then figure out her body comes back, and then, yeah, I don't know. I thought they were back at, the, I thought they took him back to the veterinary clinic. See, that's why I thought too, but no, they were at a funeral home embalming her. I yeah. was totally confused. Because he knew she was going to wake up, so he yeah. was trying to hit her with hit the trank, trank again. Yep. The guys came in and fucked yeah. it up, so that's why he goes and unscrews it, Yeah, and she punches through, and it's a whole fucking yeah, thing. I but, didn't care for that scene at all. I don't know. Like, I get, it was supposed to like be a little bit of a humorous scene because oh he's trying to stop it and then it ends up happening anyways but oh uh, yeah and it painted him as a crazy guy which he kind of was but <laughs> yeah yeah but it, now everyone kind of has a better idea that he is I don't know he I tried d- to cover it up yeah but it was I don't know 
kind of a worthless scene in my opinion. You had to introduce that awesome priest. That is true. He was pissed off as hell. <laughs> That's the scene I'll show Fred. Because he wants to watch this when I take it Saturday. I'm just going to pop it in and be like, watch this scene. <laughs> It'll be like, this is the greatest fucking movie that I've never seen. Oh, he'll love it. Especially if he likes Meet the Feebles. He owns it. Yeah. Let's see. There, there was some sort of connection between this and Meet the Feebles. But I don't um, know. It's the... the uh, the song that the organ's playing when they're mm, that's coming right. into the funeral procession or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the song from Meet the Feebles. Hmm. I'll have to maybe watch uh, Meet the Feebles. Well, that's like, um, there was a movie called A Fish Called Wanda. And then a few years later, pretty much that whole cast got back together and did a movie called Fierce Creatures. Now, I own A Fish Called Wanda, but I haven't watched it. But I've seen Fierce Creatures. That movie, I, I love that movie. It it made me laugh my ass off. It was uh, like Jamie Lee Curtis, John Cleese, Kevin Kline, um, uh, one of the other guys from uh, the troupe, the, uh, what do you call him? Monty Python? Yeah. One of the other guys from Monty Python was in it as well. Terry Gilliam? I don't think it was Terry. And it wasn't Eric Idle either. Tony Danza? Yes, Tony Danza. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Hmm. All right. We have trivia. I think we've said most of yeah, it. said a lot of them. Yeah. All right. Ratings? Sure. Um, I love this movie. Um, I saw it streaming years ago, um, probably when Netflix first started streaming for whatever reason. They somehow had this, and I'm like, I've never heard of that. And for whatever reason, I'm kind of in the same vein of you. I had seen this poster somewhere before. The poster did look familiar to me as well. Like, for, for it must have been in something, or like a preview on an old VHS or something like that. But uh, I for sure had seen it, and I'd always been curious, and I'm like, okay. Like, you know, it wasn't rated very well. I remember that it wasn't rated great, but I'm like... Peter Jackson, I'm intrigued. Let's check it out. And uh, I love the campiness, um, like the gore. Um, like, I I don't hate the acting. I thought the two leads were good enough. Like, they were kind of comically generic, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like, they're so predictable in everything they do where you just kind of laugh about it. Like... Even the end scene where he's got the amulet, you know that he's going to throw it, and she stops him because you know she's going to stop him, and it's just one of those movies where you're like, he did everything just by the book, so you're getting what you came for, like, it's everything you'd expect. But I do think you get more from this in terms of, like, graphic violence. I don't know a lot of movies that have, like, dismemberment, like this movie, um, and I really don't know a lot of horror movies that have a weird, like, slapstick kind of humor, almost. I was going to say, Shaun of the Dead-esque. Yeah, Shaun of the Dead's close, in terms of, like, weird, just, out there stuff. Uh, and I love that movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I hold this one, uh, in a special place as well. Um, I think I'd give it a 7.8. I was going to say, going back to, like, that whole slapstick thing, um, when they were reviewing this film to give it, like, you know, a PG-13 or what, whatever, an R, um, they actually really considered, in New Zealand, it was a 15 rating, so you have to be 15 years old or older, mm -hmm. and because they're like, y you can't take any of this seriously, but they all, because of the amount of gore that there is. Yeah, there's just too much. They, mm -hmm. they said they gave it an 18. So but. that'd be like over here trying to give it a PG-13, mm -hmm. yeah. but it gets an R anyway, just yeah. because of the amount of shit in They're it. They're like, yeah, obviously this is way over the top, this is meant to be funny, but we have to give it an R. So, Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Gratuitous violence prevails. Uh, yeah, this is my first time seeing Dead Alive. Um, I... For a Peter Jackson movie, it definitely was not what I was expecting. Um, and thank God Jake told me to not take it seriously. 
when we first went into it. Um, this movie is so campy and so corny and so slapstick-y, I guess, if you call that a word. Sticky. Um, it is right up my alley. Um, this movie is, uh, is Blood Diner to me. If people aren't out there that are familiar with Blood Diner, that's a 1980s camp fest directed by Jackie Kong. It's probably up there with Dead Alive in terms of campiness, uh, dismemberment, gore, violence, and just absolute absurdity. Um, so if there's one movie I can compare it to, it's definitely that. Um, and you get, I mean, you get what you, what you're expecting if you, if, if you're expecting campiness. Um, it's just gratuitous violence, like you said, uh, it's, uh, it's just everything you could want in a, a campy, uh, horror movie. Um, I'd give it, I'd give it a 7.5. I was, I was pretty damn entertained. Um, yeah, not, not like a normal Peter Jackson film. Actually, because of this, it, it on IMDb it gave a like you know is like and I remembered Peter Jackson did the Frighteners with Michael J. Fox which I've only seen a part of that I haven't seen the whole thing but I kind of want to just because I really enjoy Michael J. Fox anyways that's the Frighteners but <laughs> as you two shake violently God, um, we're fucked up yeah anyways um the critical reception for this film was great, though. I think it has like 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, 7.8 on IMDb. But like a 54 on Metacritic. So Those are all way higher than I expected. I almost shit my pants when I saw 7.8 on IMDb. But, That's um, love. Yeah. Uh, Jake is right. I mean, I don't absolutely hate this film. It had good moments to it. Here we go. Here it comes. Uh, look at his face. You guys won't even let me talk. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, because you let me talk. Actually, you didn't interrupt me. Yeah. I, okay. It's because <laughs> I bitched at you. Anyways, um, I didn't. I didn't absolutely love this film like you two. But at the same time, like I got it's. I'm glad you told me don't take it seriously at all. That helped. Um, but I did like the whole. Final scene in the foyer with the the lawnmower and his great line. What? Oh gosh, party's what? over. Yeah, party's <laughs> over. I love that. I was like, or, that. When, or when they're gonna leave and he turns around, and he's like, haven't seen mum yet. Yeah, I'm like yes. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, mum looked hot as shit. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be looking at that tonight. Um, <laughs> it's not really that disgusting. Uh, <laughs> but we've all we've all dated something like that. I think. Nope. Oh. No. no? Just me? I guess. <laughs> Someone that just sucks you into their stomach. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I It was an alright film. It, it was campy over the top. Obviously the graphics don't hold up, but it was 92 limited budget. I think they said like it was equivalent to $3 million American. Which... Is more it is about a third of the budget Stay Alive had, yeah. <laughs> which now is funny that we've done a Stay Alive than Dead Alive. Yeah, so, you're gonna have to keep up this theme, or uh, not. You could just you do know. whatever the hell you want. You know, Anyways. you know what else we did that my brother pointed out, and I didn't even notice is we did Goon and then the Goonies. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "What the fuck are you gonna do now?" I'm like, "Nothing." Like I can't, <laughs> I can't think of. Anything else, we'll just... Yeah, whatever. But I I would give... If you're a really big fan of camp, obviously this is higher. And I'm fine with campy. Like, I love the Batman movie with Adam West. And that is... He punches a shark in the face and has shark repellent. I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> but, uh... I don't know. Sometimes it just doesn't hit me right. and Or I have to be more in the mood for it. But... I'll give it a 6.3. I don't understand him. How do you hold MacGruber to a 9.9? Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. If Will 
Forte was in this as MacGruber fucking Lionel's mom at the end and going, mm, 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 <laughs> would that have made it better ten. for you? Ten. No. No, it wouldn't have. It would have made no sense. <laughs> you, would, you would have loved it. You would have loved every second of it. I don't get the camp, though. Like, you hated Riccio. You fucking hated Riccio. Yes. That's, that's camp. Like, Riccio to you is what Spies Like Us was to the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Except um, for the one, the one guy. I was going to say, uh, you're forgetting the one person who we talked to. Which <laughs> is fine. I mean, I, I just... Usually, you can hear what somebody likes and figure out the palette. I can't figure your palette out. Like I said, sometimes movies just don't hit me the right way. And I didn't give it a bad grade. I don't know what you're... No, just... Like, the... I don't know. Your review was a little somber sounding... You're like, listen, like, fuck this. Like, well, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it, it has is... very... There are definitely good jokes. The priest was a high spot. I actually enjoyed Lionel. I enjoyed the relationship between... I can't pronounce Paquita. her name. Paquita. Burrito, whatever her name is. <laughs> no, that's getting cut. <laughs> that's not getting cut. That's not getting cut. I if said I can, it. If I, I can make a Home Depot joke, you can make a burrito. Joke. I instantly said it. It was like, oh shit, why did I say that? The real tie emerges. <laughs> you fucking Trump supporter. <laughs> I'm going to build a wall. The best wall. Jesus Christ. We can't cut it, Ty. Lionel, I love you. Shut up, Taco Bell. <laughs> Whatever, Gordita. <laughs> We can't cut it now. We have you know how much I'd have to clean up to make this salvageable? <laughs> we'll bleep. We can always default to bleeping. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, that's the best thing you've ever said on this pod. <laughs> I couldn't believe you said it. Uh, anyways. I, I turned like this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, but... Uh, to go back into the movie now. <laughs> but, I don't know. The the story, obviously absurd. and But it's fine. It Like I said, it's very... Shaun Dead, I think, took some pointers from this. And... I don't know. Like, I think it was... It's been done better in other films. Like, like I said, just some of the continuity kind of ticked me off. So... Fair enough. Yeah. But I thought it was fine. Oh, yeah, we did talk about this earlier. What? When it's fine. Oh, yeah. Because fine to me means something different. (laughs) Yes, I know it does. So for you to finish it by saying it was fine pleases him greatly. It means it was above average. (laughs) Oh, boy. This is great. All right, Drew. Let's. Uh, how are we gonna finish off this October pod? Uh, in lieu of all of the recent current events regarding Halloween are concerned, uh, killer clowns and all that crazy shit. What? You've yeah, heard of these all the people clowns? dressing up like killer clowns and yeah. showing up at schools and shit like that. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are you talking about? No, it's a new like viral sensation as people wear clown mask and like brandish a knife. Yeah. Is like, that what in go places? Is yeah. that what Testy was talking about? Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. yeah. Like oh, we're doing that. Lincoln had like three instances at Southwest. Yeah. In a, Wait, in so, a week. So people are dressing up as clowns and get like knives and yeah. going. It will just stand these... there. Well, sometimes not even knives. Like they'll just dress up like clowns and, and go they'll places. just stand there like to go scare the shit out of kids. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes people are paid to do it. I've heard. So so in and, and there was one one instance in New York. A guy did it on the subway to chase a guy out of the subway. What the fuck? I know to celebrate these <laughs> these <laughs> the events, absurdity. Yeah, uh, I I kind of cheated a little bit. It's not technically a movie. It's a mini series. From 1990, uh, based on the Stephen King bestseller novel from 1986. Christine? It. It. Oh. Isn't Christine a car? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, 
that'll be a little more serious, creepy. Hey, it's Tim Curry. I don't care. It's amazing. It's Tim Curry as a clown. We all float down here? Yep. Question mark? Hiya, Georgie. I, 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 I couldn't even recognize that it was Tim Curry. The makeup and everything. He fucking knocks that roll out of the park, dude. Mm-hmm. Tim Curry knocks every roll he does out of the park. Yep. What? I thought he was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. I look <laughs> out of face. respect for Tim Curry. But, all right, well, so we'll be watching it. Now, that'll take a little time. Yeah, it's <laughs> over three hours long. I know. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> Holy shit. That's that's about as long as Titanic, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you got to think it's a TV, it's a two part TV yeah. miniseries. I'm picking Band of Brothers next. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'm picking uh, uh, The Bold and the Beautiful. Fucking 52 years of <laughs> horse shit. Yep. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for this week on TJD. Um, like, subscribe, download, tell your friends. Uh, we send, have a Facebook. Send Jake to our email. Send Jake naked pictures of Whoopi Goldberg and Leslie Jones. He'll love those. Nobody has done this. Do fan art. We have been getting more responses on the YouTube and Facebook lately. Hey, YouTube's kind of. Yeah, that was, yeah. We, we will there. gladly talk to you. We get lonely. We're not as mean as we seem. No. We just say mean things <laughs> sometimes. It's all good fun. It's uh, all jokes here. Yes. I so, mean, I'm a dick, but these two are okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> uh, so that's what that feels like. <laughs> all right. So, from all of us at TJD, I'm Ty, Jake, and I'm Drew. Boy.